Well, what is up, everybody? Thanks for stopping in for this live stream um, for talking about summer lawn care. Um, had to reschedule this a few times, so finally getting um, to where we can get this up and going. So I appreciate everybody uh, dropping in here to talk about summer lawn care. And as always, if you have questions, that's what this is all about. Uh, the more questions we get, the better this will be to talk about struggles or what you, what you guys are experiencing in your lawn um, during the summer. And I'll, and I'll talk a, a bit about what I've been experiencing here in Northeast Indiana with my lawn. So don't hesitate to throw those questions down in the uh, comments and we'll, we'll get to those as we go through. Um, but basically in a nutshell, I think the last time I went live was with uh, when we had no coast turf on. Uh, and that was probably a month or so ago. So it's been kind of an interesting summer for me. I know many of you probably follow me on social media and saw, ah, gosh, it was probably the end of May, I believe, when I tore a tendon in my right ankle. So we kind of have a had a slow start to the summer um, in relation to getting things going. My wife had to help me out a bit. Uh, it, to get things taken care of in the lawn as far as mowing and stuff. So that kind of set me back a little bit for the summer. So as we got into summer, we got into the heat and the humidity. Things really started uh, to some posts that better. Um, I had made some, having some fungus come on while, while I was in my air cast boot. And of course, my wife has no idea how to do anything in relation to fungicide mowing she's fine with um but that was a no-go so i just kind of had a watch from the window and uh you know kind of watch the grass dwindle away so when i finally got back on my feet um is when i hit it hard and was able to get things um you know starting to get things taken care of in relation to the fungus now if you don't know historically i've battled a lot with leaf spot um in the june july august months so in the past last year's the first year that i really hit the leaf spot hard um and really got on it with a uh, hardcore fungicide treatment program i tried out the disease x in the past i tried out some of the bayer uh the propiconazole uh, from like Home Depot before, didn't wasn't having much luck with it in my experience. Um, that's what I tried. I got more onto. I started using the Zoxystrobin, Propiconazole, the stronger stuff. Last year saw some good improvement with the fungus last year, uh, and I really you know kept things at bay. But I couldn't quite get over the hump last year, and last year was a pretty bad weather year here for northeast indiana we had a lot of humidity we had a lot of hot uh nights so when we when we hit that 150 degree rule or the 150 rule um where our humidity and our heat our daytime temps are are going up um things you know last year were terrible i would say our weather's a little better here this summer in relation to cooler nighttime temps not as much rain and, th and things seem to be a little better on the fungus front. So as far as that goes, I kind of got a late start, like I said. Uh, but, you know, it took me a while to uh, some curative apps of my Zoxystrobin propiconazole. And I mixed in some Claris in there as well, too. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a never-ending battle um, <laughs> from my end. But I, as of today, things are looking fantastic. I changed a few things in my fungicide program which we'll get to here in a minute um so let's get into some questions now that we got some questions rolling in gary here talking about when to apply fall pre-emergent so last year was the first time that i applied a fall pre-emergent now i will typically wait um when we cool off a little bit more typically i'll put it down probably about the same time that i oversee um, which this year I'm planning on doing an overseed, which I haven't done in a few years just because I have so much grass seed that I need to use before it, it expires. Um, and I just need to get it out of my garage that I've had for a while. So I'm going to do that this season. I'm not going to be doing pre-emergent, but typically 
I'll do the like I'm planning on doing my overseed about the first part of September. I think it really just it depends on the weather. So when you you notice the temps start cooling off, the soil temps fall back under. Um, you know, you get back in the 60s and you're getting consistent temps uh, lowering down. That's typically when I'll put it down because really in all actuality here in the uh, Midwest for cool season grass, it's going to be um, sitting over the winter anyway. So, I mean, really, I don't think you're going to go wrong with whenever you put that down. But I tend to go later, you know, when we get more in the fall, I, like September. Last year, I believe I put mine down about mid-September depending on the weather. Last year we had a little bit warmer temps into September, but um, depending on where you're at, Gary, I think you're, you said you were in Kentucky. So um, depending on what your weather's like there, just kind of play it by ear. And when things start to cool off, that's typically when I apply that pre-emergent. And yeah, the fungicide, I mean, depending on what you're dealing with, I, I always warn people too. So it's easy to get online and look through Instagram and YouTube and kind of self-diagnose what you got going on. I tried that and I didn't have much luck with trying to battle it. I would say I always recommend to people whenever I talk to people that ask me about fungicide is um, make sure you're getting a good diagnosis of what you have. Now, there's several good resources, especially for those of you who are here in Indiana. And I think this also goes to out of state. But Purdue University has a great uh, program through their agricultural uh, turf program where you can even pull up samples of your grass, send it off, get a good diagnosis of what you have going on. And I think it's, uh, yeah, I'll just share the resource here with you. This is a very good resource. I have not personally used it. However, I have heard feedback from people who have used it and say that it's absolutely fantastic. So if you're an Indiana resident, it's only 11 bucks. Basically you pull a sample. It's got instructions here on the turf, on the Purdue website to where you can go in, pull a sample out of your yard of either weeds or fungus. Um, they will, you'll send it to the lab via their instructions with the $11 fee if you're in Indiana, in Indiana, 22 if you're outside of Indiana. They will put it under the microscope and they will give you an expert report back and say, this is exactly what you're dealing with. And what that gives you is you basically um, are going to get an accurate diagnosis of what you're dealing with. And then you can go down a, a battle plan of figuring out what you need to do or what products work best for you. Um, from that aspect another thing like pj says here is if you are having fungus issues there's always a reason why you have it now fungus will stay in the soil um i was advised by my extension office it's going to stay in your soil regardless so it's always going to be there however when we get into this time when we, we the, the weather conditions are ripe for it we hit that 150 degree mark uh it's going to be more prevalent in your lawn so you really need to watch out on um when we get into those times moisture and moisture like pj says here is very important on um fungus so on, on limiting fungus so dial back your watering also you know try to get out there and measure your output I know a lot of people have reached out to me here from our area saying, you know, hey, I, I water my yard for 20 minutes and, you know, three times a week. That's what I water. It's like you got to you got to measure that output, see what you're getting down. Not everybody's water pressure is the same. Not every sprinkler output is the same. So it's pretty important on um, knowing how much you're putting down, because that 20 minutes you may be putting down a lot. You may be putting down hardly anything um which can lead to issues either way i mean if you're not putting down enough things could be drying out and if you really don't have that you know expert opinion on you know, or knowledge i would say on or experience with the fungus then you're going to be looking at you know if things dry out you may think it's fungus and you may be throwing down pesticides you know on on that 
aren't needed. Uh, so you don't really want to start throwing down stuff that you don't really need. So check for your cultural practices first is what I would recommend. Uh, always make sure water wise. And, and I mean, sometimes you can do all things right. And I'll, I'll say you could do all things right. Last year I measured my output. We weren't getting a lot of rain. I was putting down, I even backed down to an inch a week, tried to do through the summer with a hydrotain. Everything was going great. And sometimes the weather is just not going to cooperate. So like I say, Mother Nature always is going to win. And sometimes it's going to be so hot and humid that even with preventative fungicide treatments, you're going to deal with fungus. Um, you may have to repair stuff in the fall. But um, it's just kind of a, we got to play it by ear with the weather. And sometimes the cultural practices, you could do everything right. And we'd still have issues with that. So, I mean, it's a never ending battle every year on dealing, dealing with disease, I would say. Welcome in Clint, neighbor dominator. Thanks for joining in, man. I am in, so I'm about uh, 10 minutes from Fort Wayne. So I actually work in Fort Wayne. Um, so I'm really close to Fort Wayne. Not far. I, I can't remember what part of Michigan you're in. But um, we're, I'm probably about an hour from the Michigan line in, in Fort Wayne here. Um, so, yeah, thanks for joining in, man. <clears throat> see what else we got here. So, yeah, in relation to the fungus, I mean, once it's in there, I personally, in my own yard, speaking from my own experience, I've never had it just go away on its own. Now, you can correct things. So, like, if you're over applying water, you can dial back water. You can measure your, your sprinkler output. If it rains, cut off your sprinklers. Um, like, I know we just got an inch and a half of rain or so in the past couple of days. I won't be watering again for at least a week, depending on how hot it gets. So, you really need to keep an eye on getting, even getting, like, a $10 rain gauge or checking rain measurements online, just seeing... How much rain's coming down and if we get a lot of rain like we just did here in this area I, i'm cutting off my sprinklers i'm not going to have anything going for the next week or so um and it's just kind of a watch watch and wait kind of thing but as far as the fungus goes i mean correcting the cultural practices will, will help but um it's going to be in your soil i really had i and i i really think that a lot of my issues were traced back to it was 2020, uh, so before I started the YouTube channel, the city came in, ripped out our front yard, and put a sidewalk, the sidewalk in um, that you've probably seen in the videos out front. So they tore all that out. It was all grass prior. They put in the sidewalk, and they came in, and they seeded. It was probably middle of early August to the middle of August, um, and they put hydro seed down. So... I came home, saw the hydro seed, and was like, this is fantastic. <laughs> We're going to have grass again. I mean, it was so hot and humid that year that with the hydro seed, it basically just sat there, and it festered. And I had uh, pythium. Uh, stuff was rotting out. We had, you know, the grass germinated, and then it just started to rot. We had what looked like the pythium if you're ever familiar with pythium things it's basically looks like almost like spider webs you'll see them in the morning and it will just kill your grass and it will kill it fast um come to find out they weren't supposed to hydro seed until the fall but they were trying to get it out of the way and get it done and basically ever since that time especially in the front yard is where i deal with a lot of it and that's where that happened and i don't have pythium but the fungal spores it's just kind of in that area so it's something that i deal with kind of sucks i've kind of got it more under control now with a good plan on how to battle it so i'll usually hit it early um and make sure that you know we i'm not dealing with it and it's helped tremendously um but i've never really had it i probably wouldn't just let it go on my own now there's some people that you'll see that don't usually deal with fungus like i've seen i've had uh friends and people who don't have fungus in their lawn and i envy those people then they may get it at certain points in time 
but they don't struggle with it as much. It's also going to depend on your grass type as well. So there's a lot of different things that come into it, but summer is a lot of time when people get discouraged. They're like, I can't, I can't keep my grass green. You know, it, it browns up, it dies off, et cetera. So it's just something that we got, constantly got to battle with. Um, and it's not really going to go away. Yeah, come on down, man. I'm, I'm. You can come, come on down. I'm pretty close to Turf Titan, so <laughs> come down and visit everybody, and come on, stop by. That would be awesome. And Sarah, thanks for joining in, Sarah. I appreciate you stopping by. Great explanation of water value. Yeah, so that's one of the biggest things that I think people find it hard to understand is they especially I've noticed a lot of people with in-ground irrigation is they'll say, Hey, I got, you know, I run my sprinklers for X amount of time and really have no idea what's going on in relation to volume. So volume is always key. Um, so definitely pay attention to volume and not so much time. I will say in my own experience with my water pressure and the sprinklers I use, I use the rainbird heads. I don't have an in-ground irrigation system, so it's kind of been a work in process. Um, it's more of a, to get a half inch down with the hoses and the output and pressure I have on city water. It takes me about an hour per head to get a half an inch down. So I'll do that two to three times a week per head per zone. So I got about seven heads in the lawn and I finally just put them on timers, set it up. So it waters while I'm sleeping. It starts about 3 a.m. and it ends by 10 a.m. in the morning. I get the entire lawn done. I've automated pretty much everything. And I know when 10 o'clock comes and everything shuts off that I got a half an inch down. So it's kind of a good gauge on keeping things, helping cut down that disease pressure, but also keeping the lawn hydrated. Um, and I, I have personally, I'll, I'll usually shoot for an inch and a half, but with products like the hydrotain that I use, I haven't used that this year cause I was testing that hydro holder, but I definitely will go back to hydrotain, got a bunch of it in the garage. Um, that definitely has helped cut down water. And so when I put that down and use that during the summer, I'll typically dial back from an inch and a half to about an inch and not really notice much of a difference. So that helps save me on my water bill. Also helps cut, cut down on some of that disease pressure uh, as well. Yeah. So as far as the leaf spot, some things that I have personally dealt with in the leaf spot, definitely what I do is this year I am cutting lower. I'm down to three and a half. 3.25 I just bumped up a few weeks ago. Prior to that, I dropped down to, um, I got some pictures here. I dropped the height lower on the lawn, just given the fact that we were dealing with disease pressure. Um, so this is at two, 2.75 here several weeks ago. So when the fungus really took off, I killed it off, starting to grow out, hit it with some nitrogen, to get that to start growing, um, grew a bunch of it out and then I dropped the height of cut, mowed that off, did a light dethatching and it wasn't super hot. So I typically would not dethatch in the summer, but try to get rid of some of that brown stuff. Um, did a light dethatching and took a lot of that out. So I got a lot of the green brack, got a lot of that brown out of there. Um, but definitely with the nitrogen, I wouldn't go crazy with it, but staying, keeping the nitrogen in the lawn has definitely helps that leaf spot grow out once you get the fungicide in there um, and get it growing out of there so you can get that green again. So um, I noticed a, I've had people email me and say, hey, you know, I keep throwing fertilizer at this. I've tried iron. I've tried all kinds of stuff. Can't seem to get over the hump and get it green. How do you get your lawn green? And when they send you photos, it's like, you can tell why it's it's that disease. So you see those lesions on the grass. And when once the leaf spot hits about this time of year, if you don't take care of it, the melting out will just kill the grass. So I dealt with that before I really knew what I was dealing with in relation to the leaf spot several years ago. It would die off. I couldn't figure out why it was dying off every summer. 
I'd have to oversee it, spend a bunch of money and time, and it it was just a total pain. So this saves me a lot of time in in the in the fall time from overseeding, um, and it's really helped out in in relation to keeping that fungus off the lawn, keeping it looking green during the summer, and and keeping things easier to maintain as I as I go through the year. Yeah, so I mean, I think every every grass type is going to deal with fungus, especially the older varieties. So this lawn, when I moved in here in 2012, looked absolutely terrible. I think I've posted uh, some pictures of it in the past when we moved in, but um, it's it's it was a whole mixture of stuff. So I've the last you know six seven years that I've lived here, I've overseeded with fescue varieties just because I think the fescue stands up to my heat better and the uh, traffic on the lawn, the kids running around the lawn, et cetera. It's, it's definitely held up better. So that's what I tend to overseed with. I use a lot of the Jonathan green seed in the past. Uh, last year I used some of that RTF um, that I picked up off of PJ's recommendation. That's what I'll plan on using this year to get that down and out of my garage, the rest of that bag. So, you know, I, I really haven't noticed much of a difference in relation to the varieties I've been using and the fungus, but they do state that the, the newer varieties have better disease tolerance. I have not yet to see that yet in my personal experience, but it's going to be hard to detect that with a whole mixture unless you're going from new seed. So unless you, you nuke off the grass and, and start over and then kind of watch that, um, which I'm probably never going to hit that point. <laughs> uh, that's just so much work. Um, but yeah, I, I would say, you know, it's, and, and every yard's unique. So I may have fescue and three doors down may have fescue and we'll have totally different lawns. It's going to just depend on those cultural practices, watering, mowing, how we take care of it. Um, and then the weather is ultimately going to determine what we got going on. So um, it's hard to compare each other's lawns. I think we all fall in that trap too. It's like what works on my yard might not necessarily work on this yard, but it may work on this yard. So, I mean, it, it all comes down to where we're at, what kind of soil we're deal dealing with, weather conditions. It's, it's just a huge game of trying to figure everything out and, and stay on top of it. Yeah, send me a message, Clint. Uh, we'll definitely hook that up. That'd be awesome. Come stop, stop by, and we'll check out the yard. Or if you're going to come down and visit Turf Titan, check it out. Yeah, same. I've been there. It's sometimes the weather just does not cooperate. Um, and I will say, you mentioned Claris. So I use Claris a lot. Well, not a lot, but, you know, there's the maximum on it. So I'll mix it in with that propiconazole, azoxystrobin. I'll mix in maybe two applications a year. And that usually gets me right under the annual max per thousand square feet. Um, and I've noticed that for my leaf spot, the Claris has worked fantastic. And it definitely helps jumpstart it. This is a new product that I just happened to stumble upon upon when i was on i don't know if anybody's seen this before i think i've asked dan about it um but this stuff here is basically claris and i saw the price and i was like um <laughs> this is crazy uh but this is basically 85 percent active ingredient comparable to claris i think claris is like 40 some percent um i ended up picking this up this is what i'll hit next year i've already done my two apps this year so i don't want to don't want to exceed that annual maximum because this is pretty strong stuff um but if anybody that uses clearest is interested in this this looks like a, i don't know if this is a clearance sale or what is going on with this but it's basically um only 89 bucks for five and a half pounds of the stuff that mixes up and it's labeled for numerous diseases 
Knife had great success with this with Leaf Spot, Claris in particular, and I've verified the labels, went through everything. So it's basically the exact same thing, just not the name brand Claris. Way cheaper. So if you're interested in that, check it out, chemicalwarehouse.com. Um, I haven't used it yet, but that's a good deal for, for only 89 bucks if you're somebody that uses Claris a lot. Hey, what's up, Nate? Thanks for joining in, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, like, I, I do like the lower cut. So one of the reasons why I typically don't ever cut that low, and I think I've talked to PJ about this, um, the... And I don't think I have a picture of it. So these, this company reached out. I know a lot of you have probably seen this, the Luba. So this came probably three to four weeks ago and I've been using it um, since then. Got it installed. I just haven't got to do the video yet on it, but that'll be coming soon. Now I noticed when I, so this thing will only cut up to 2.8 inches. So that was way lower than what I usually cut. I put this thing, installed it, cut it loose. Um, everything's worked out pretty good with it. And it did actually almost like a dethatch on the lawn. So it pulled out a lot of that stuff. So you can kind of see the blades here. So instead of a typical mower blade, it's going to have these little, they look like razor blades to me. I was kind of skeptical when I first saw them. Um, so I bumped this thing to the max height of 2.8, put it out there, let it do its thing kind of mess with the settings. I've been messing with the settings since then. And it does a fairly decent job. I've been pretty impressed with it. But this thing, so it kind of jump started me to do the dethatch. It kind of pulled out some of that dead stuff and um, took it to where, you know, I could get out there and bag it. So I dropped the cut on the Time Master and dethatched it, and bagged everything up. So that kind of gave me, like I said, that jump start. So this thing will mow at at 2.8 um the time master drops to 2.75 so i'm a little under that when i drop it down that low looks great feels great um i noticed though when we got a little hotter i did bump it up probably two weeks ago just to try to battle that heat um but definitely in the next couple weeks um things look like they're going to start cooling off here shortly i will be dro dropping down again um and getting that there's a picture of those stripes from luba so i did the d thatch and luba does stripe pretty well um there's some definitely some improvements that could be made with it but it's been doing a great job so far and it does lay stripes so i've, I've been quite impressed with it and i i am liking that lower cut as well so that's that's one of the reasons why i dropped the height of cut lower a few weeks back just to get that um, stuff out of there and bag it up and, and suck it up. Yeah, sometimes you just got to do it. <laughs> get that stuff. I hate seeing the brown in there, especially when things get hot and some of that grass just goes. It's sometimes easier to just do a light one and go over it a little higher and quicker and get it taken care of and out of there so we can see the green again. So yeah, the, I mean that that uh, RTF that I used last year, um, I did overseed some spots. I did about a quarter of the lawn, actually, um, up in this uh, this area. So this area of the lawn here, if you can see on the green screen, I was overseeded with that RTF with for some spots that I lost due to fungus. So I went on vacation last year about this time. And fungus just took off and, and killed off a few spots while I was gone. So I did put it in that area. It's hard to tell if what's spread and what's not. Um, I have been doing the plugs to where I, I found the uh, small pots for the pro plugger and put those in. And those seem to be doing rather well. So when I, I use the turf mend or whatever, um, I will tear up a few spots, whatever's torn up. I'll rake it up a little bit, put a couple of those plugs in around there, and then put the turf mend in uh, with it. 
and it definitely does a good job since the plugs are a little more mature. It kind of roots in really well. They already got good established roots from those pots. They'll root down in there. And I've noticed that when I do that, definitely on the hills in the backyard, it'll help from keeping that rain from washing the seed away. Um, just given that I put, you know, four or five of those plugs in the spot to kind of hold things down. And then you got the turf men over top of it. But that's done a great job of that. And I've also been mixing some of that in just because I had a 50 pound bag last year, didn't oversee. And I'm trying to cut down on keeping that for another winter. I've been mixing it in with the turf men that I put down. So anytime I can put something in like the RTF, uh, give variety, I'm always going to do that. But that's what I'm going to, I'm going to use the rest of it uh, this spring or this fall, probably around the first week of September is when I'm going to do it based on travel and trips. I've got to try to get that in around that time and we'll see, see what happens next year with it. But overall it's, it's worked out pretty good. I can't, can't say for certain if it's spread or not. I don't know how long it takes to spread, but I'm guessing it's going to be a, a pretty slow, pretty slow spread. Thanks for joining in, Ruben. Appreciate you stopping by. <clears throat> Different kind of grass. So, I mean, baseball, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the, the yard the way it is now. I would say it's probably about 85% fescue. Um, I don't really have any major issues outside of the disease, which I don't know if putting in a new grass type would take care of that anyway. Um, honestly, if I could, I, I love the look of the real mo grass. If I could put something in uh, like rye or something like that, and mow it really short, do the real mo look. I mean, I love that look. Um, if that's something that I could ever do. However, with this yard, I couldn't, I don't think I could ever real mow. It's too, the terrain of it is, we're kind of at the end of the addition. So a lot of the drainage comes down this way and the way that the yard is angled because back behind us here is a hill. So when the water comes down the hill, they basically have, um, cut in drainage each on each side of the lawn that drains out, which is good for the house and the rest of the lawn and kind of drains out. Uh, I'm on a mirror here. This area here, um, if you can see over the hill, it kind of drains out into the street down the storm drain. And then the other side has one as well. So it's going to, it's kind of hard with those angles to, I mean, it's not flat enough, but that's something if I ever could do it or if we ever moved and I had the opportunity to do it, that I would definitely probably give a try or be interested in trying. Uh, definitely. Hey, what's up, Wesley? Thanks for joining in. I appreciate it. Thanks for stopping by. Just trying to go through the comments here. So, yeah, if there's anything else specific summer-wise um, that you want to talk about, just let me know. Drop them in the comments. Um, just kind of want to give everybody an update on what I got going on here in relation to the, the what I've been doing in the lawn this summer. Uh, sometimes it's easier just to get on here and talk about it and go over what's been going on instead of trying to make five videos about it. Um, but yeah, definitely my big biggest plan going forward here from where August 7th, um, we're going to try to get keep things going for the rest of the summer, get that height of cut back down uh, to around 2.75 ish if I can and maintain at that height for the next several weeks. And then first week of September, I'm going to aerate, which I haven't core aerated this yard for a while, probably four years, three or four years. Um, I don't do it every year. Um, it's just when things start to get, uh, harder or when I do a full overseed, I will aerate. So I'm going to core aerate it. We're going to put uh, that rest of that RTF down in the yard and uh, we'll get that going. And it's kind of fall time with trips here. That's the only weekend I really have to do it. So we're going to be on a trip the week before that. And then we're going on a trip at the end of the month. So I got, I got about a three and a half week window of uh, 
getting the seed down, keeping it watered and getting it to germinate and kind of somewhat established before I go on another trip to make sure it doesn't die off um, or we waste the seed. So that's definitely in the plans going forward to keep that height of cut down and do an overseed um, and put that down. So I have that RTF also have some uh, clean, the clean seed from lawn and pest control supply. So if you guys haven't, haven't used them or haven't seen them before, um, definitely check them out because I've noticed that a lot of those, I think I actually found out about these guys from Dan last year or last fall, give them, check them out. And, uh, some of the stuff they are way more competitive on price than if you deal with the other companies. So I've been using them a lot. I've been using chemical warehouse a lot in relation to fungicides, um, and other things. So, um, definitely give them a shot and see some of the stuff that they've been putting out there. It's been fantastic. I know lawn and pest uh, control supply has been on keep off the grass. Um, recently this year but this is one of the um, seeds that they sent me to try so i'm really interested i've put a couple of these in the plug pots um but i try to keep the plug pots more with the rtf so they spread um they're coming out with a, a different um blend so the, basically they told me that the blends are going to change based on what kind of seeds are available but this is this is high quality seed. I can't remember the cultivars that are in the one I got. I'd have to look. They emailed it to me. Um, but if I have, I'm going to use that RTF and probably blend some of this in as well. Um, I did put it in in one of the bare spots out back. It germinated fantastic and it looks great. Um, it came up really quick. So definitely um, give this company a look if you're in the market for buying things they have had great customer service and some of their stuff i wouldn't say all their stuff is lower priced but a lot of their stuff you can find more competitive than if you're shopping websites like um, do my own or some of those other websites so between them and chemical warehouse i've had great success with them this season and and we'll keep that up Yeah, thanks for stopping by, Nate. I appreciate it Any t every time. So training the lawn, I mean, honestly, that first, when I, when I drop the cut, I don't ever just drop it. So, like, if I go from when I did drop the cut, I went from... So the time master mows at three, 3.75, 3.25, and 2.75. It goes in those increments. So it's a little off of the standard three, three and a half, four. Um, so when I do it, I will typically, and I usually bag it when I do it just because there's so many clippings. I'll drop it down and I'll mow it a couple times. Now I do mow every three, four days, depending on how, how fast things are growing. Um, but I'll drop it down. I'll mow it a couple times at that height. And then I'll drop it down again. So when I drop back down from 3.25 to 2.75, it'll be an easier drop. I'll drop it down, mow it a few times at that. And after a few times that I've, I've noticed, it depends also on your weather. If you drop it down and things get crazy hot and dry and you're not keeping things watered, you're really going to stress things out. Um, but if you got a good base and the lawn's healthy, you can get away with dropping it down and getting it to look good. And I've usually noticed within a week, week or two in my lawn, things usually look as they would. This here is at a 3.25, I think. So once I drop that down, now the stripes I don't think will be, you know, they weren't as defined, but you're not dealing with a lot of uh, more grass to, to roll over to get those stripes. But you'll still see them, especially with that deep, dark green and things honestly i've noticed a lot of success from it in relation to the kids trampling all over it so this season i've also been using silica um and i used it for a little bit last year uh this this new product i'm using is looking promising it's worked fantastic um and uh 
it's it's definitely something that I'll I'll put into my rotation going forward, and uh, hopefully by next spring, all that will be something that everybody can benefit from, and uh, you know, it's definitely worked fantastic for me. And I've known a few other people that have used it and had good success with it. Um, so definitely looking forward to that. More to come on that. But the silica has helped uh, keep things standing up. And I think that's also helped with my fungus. I can't attribute that 100%. But the silica, keeping that grass from matting down and laying over like this and just sitting there with the moisture in it, as opposed to the silica has kind of helped keep things upright getting that air in there, getting them uh, to where the moisture is not hanging around. Definitely think it hasn't hurt anything from doing it that way and keeping that grass more upright, but also dropping the cut. Typically, I would mow in the summer a little higher. I've dropped it and maintained at 3.25, mowed it there for a couple weeks at 2.75. Honestly, if I could mow it all the time at 2.75, I would do it. I like the look. I like the way... It doesn't get trampled over by the kids, um, and it definitely, I think, helps cut down on the disease pressure on the lawn as well by just letting things breathe and keeping that airflow going down to those roots of that grass. It's worked pretty well for me, for sure. Making sure I didn't miss anything here. So, yeah, I mean, if we don't have any more questions, that's pretty much all. I don't want to keep everybody forever tonight, but uh, I appreciate you all joining in, um, kind of giving an update on the lawn and answering some summer lawn questions. As always, if you have questions, reach out, ask ask questions. If I don't know the answer, I'll, I'll help you find the answer. Um, also, stay tuned. We got some awesome stuff uh, giveaway-wise from Ecologel that they sent up that we'll be giving away. Um, if you've never... Uh, experienced Ecologel. They have fantastic products. Ecologel makes products like Hydrotain, um, Cytogro, Foreplay, Bloomplex. So we got a bottle of each of those to give away. Um, we'll do giveaways here going forward. I still have, we did a giveaway for Turfmen yesterday on the Turfmen video um, that, we, that I put out last week. So we got all three of those bags out in the mail and picked up by our local winner and i got another bag of turf men to give away um, as well so we'll do those later probably in the next several weeks and kind of spread them out a little bit um, but definitely stay tuned we'll, we'll figure out how to give that stuff away i love being able to work with these companies and get these products in your guys's hands um, and you know I'll, helping you benefit as well using these products and, and seeing that, you know, it's not just me sitting here telling you how good they are. You guys can experience them and see firsthand how good these products are. Um, and yeah, the turf men, like Wesley says here, been using it a couple years and this stuff is great. It's an easy alternative, especially for somebody who doesn't want to screw around with mixing up a peat moss mix um, the granulated compost that they switched to this year is fantastic it's now on the home depot free shipping smaller bags i think they've definitely taken several steps in the right direction this year making their product easier to get to people instead of somebody having to buy a 50 pound bag of turf men now you can get an eight pound bag patch spots etc so um, it's definitely been they made some good strides this year with that granulated compost and the changes that they they mixed. Um, and Dane here, yeah, Dane was the winner of the hydro holder. So can't wait to see your experience with that. I've had a good experience with it um, this year. So um, it's been been a good product that they released that I've had good experience with. And also, I'll just put my disclaimer out there as I always do. This this product is not hydrotain. So. The science behind Hydro Holder and Hydrotain is different. If you guys have more questions about that, make sure you check that description of that video I posted that has very detailed information on 
what each one of these does. Now they have a similar end goal, but hydrotain is a much different science. Honestly, I'll probably use these in like tandem or rotation going forward, just because I've noticed a good benefit with hydro holder. Um, are they necessary to use together? No, but I mean, I have hydro holder on hand and I have hydrotain on hand. So why not give it a shot and see what happens? Cause I know what they both do separately from my own experience. So I wonder what they can do together. Maybe we'll do a video on that um, to see. Oh, and one other thing I did want to touch on, I've gotten a lot of negative feedback on, I posted a video on the YouTube channel a while back about Sublime Herbicide. So Sublime Herbicide is a newer herbicide that came out from Prime Source. It's been out for less than a year. It's a mixture of mesotrione, which is tenacity. It's got triclopyr in it. And I believe the third ingredient was dicamba. Um, I did, I'm trying to get the video over here. Did a video on it because the manufacturer says um, that this product will not bleach. Now, I quit using tenacity a while back because it's a good product at seeding time. I think it has a purpose at that point in time. Now, as referenced in some of these comments I get off, I got off this YouTube video, people think tenacity is the best thing that ever happened to this world and that it's an all-in-one weed killer and it will handle every single thing that you throw it at. And if you badmouth tenacity, you're basically <laughs> the bane of their existence, I guess. Um, I mean, it's been pretty wild, some of the comments I've gotten back on that. Basically, the point of the, the short, it was a short, was that Sublime Herbicide said that it wouldn't bleach, and it absolutely bleached the hell out of my yard. Good grass and weeds. I was targeting some grassy weeds. Now, this stuff is uh, touted to work fantastic for grassy weeds. I've talked to other people, even professionals, that have used this locally, and they're like, yeah, this stuff is fantastic. I don't know why you bleach. I've gotten like, you applied it wrong. You put it down in the wrong temperatures. This is just what it does, um, et cetera. And basically, interestingly enough, I didn't want to just say, well, this product sucks. I, I kind of wanted an answer on what happened. So it basically, I, I was able to touch base with the rep at Prime Source, the, the guy who personally handles this product, Sublime Herbicide. And he was gracious enough awesome he called me back we had a long discussion probably half an hour on the phone of this product and sublime herbicide in all their chemical trials does not bleach so it has tenacity in it mixed with the triclopyr and there's something to do with the um it's a mixture because of the the way that the amount that they mixed mesotrione with triclopyr and dicamba in all their lab tests it has no bleaching so and it's not supposed to bleach now they the issue with this product is in the 32 ounce bottles that they're finding that the mesotrione is not staying suspended with the other chemicals so when that happens and it's not suspended in that mixture then the product bleaches the tips just like regular tenacity would. So they haven't had this product in the larger bottles. Now they sell it in, I believe, two and a half gallon jugs, which at the rate this stuff goes down, I think it was a quarter, three quarters of an ounce per thousand square feet. You pretty much have to be a golf course or commercial, using it commercially to buy something like that. And it, it has not bleached um, from all the feedback they've gotten in the professional realm from those larger jugs it's obviously something to do with the 30 ounce 32 ounce jugs so the plan is i'm going to test it again and probably not in my own yard i'm probably going to do it in my or i may do it in my own yard i don't know i will say it worked fantastic i got rid of those grassy weeds everything died and it was back to normal in probably three and a half weeks the bleaching was gone it just it looked terrible for three and a half weeks in the, sp the springtime when things are supposed to look great. So that's my own personal preference. I just don't like the bleaching um, of that product. 
in the actual label. Yeah. So on there and straight from the rep, it's not supposed to bleach. So it is not supposed to bleach. It actually says on their website that it suppresses it um, in their website. Now, suppression is, is, is what it is, but coming from that rep, he, it's not supposed to bleach. And it's basically what he had advised me to do is shake the bottle vigorously for several minutes. Now, typically when I spray any herbicide or any product like fungicides, I will give it a shake. I don't shake it for three minutes. So we'll see, I'll put it in, shake it up really good and, and put it down. But I will say, as far as the weeds go, it worked fantastic. And I was pleased with how it killed the weeds off. Um, had some goose grass out front that was coming up that I haven't been able to use anything to get rid of. It pretty much nuked that in that amount of time. Took care of it. It's gone. Um, but yeah, well, I'll be interested to see if it actually bleaches again or if what happens with that. But suffice that to say, as... They've had numerous people complain about, not just me, about the 32-ounce bottle and bleaching based on their claims that it's not supposed to bleach. So I found that interesting. I just wanted to share that with everybody and put it on here. I haven't got around to making a video, but given some of the comments that I've gotten off of that video that are still coming in, um, we're at the point where it's just laughable at this point. Um, but yeah. In my opinion, tenacity is not the greatest herbicide available to mankind. Um, there's way better options out there, but some people love love it and love to use it and to each their own. I'm not here to tell you what to do or how to do it. I'm just based on what my experience is and what I've had success with. So with that said, I think that is finally all that I had here to talk about. So. I appreciate y'all joining in. Like I said, I had to reschedule this a few times uh, due to some schedule changes and stuff. So appreciate. We had a great turnout. Uh, great questions here for the Summer Lawn Live. And stay tuned. I'll be doing that video on Luba uh, coming up uh, to kind of go over what I think about it. And there's several things that I would improve upon on it. It's not perfect, but um, hey, it's got a got to definitely got a, a market out there for it and uh i've had decent success with it so i'll leave it at that i won't spoil too much about the video but i appreciate y'all stopping by thank you so much and hey yeah we'll end the show like wesley says go blue and uh always go blue we'll be flying the michigan and i wore the the we're almost to football season we got the hooked outdoors uh, amazing blue hat here so Go Blue. Everybody have a good rest of your night, and I appreciate you stopping.